Gardner, Jason Gardner. Oh. Hello, Lily. Oh. Oh, sit yourself down. You love it. I'm so excited you're here. I had no idea there would be cuisine. Would you like to learn something? No, I'm okay. Yes, you Thank have to you. sing in a bit. You don't want to. You, I do. Yeah, well, are artichokes not good for singing? No, they'll coat the chords. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know these things. How are you? I'm so well. All the better for seeing you. I wore this for you. Thank um, you. Be, it's wow. a young Irish designer named Circa O'Reilly. So I wore this for you. Uh, listen, I, uh, spare your blushes, but I want to begin by just sort of celebrating Lady Gaga with some of these amazing statistics, right? So, the last single, Born This Way, number one in 17 countries, 69 million singles sold, 23 million albums, just the one album, 23 million of them sold, highest grossing tour ever for a debut album, a billion views on YouTube, the most downloaded artist history in history, and according to Time magazine, the fifth most powerful person in the world. <laughs> You're 25! You're 25 years old! Wow. Make me some blessing. You're only 25? 25, 25 I'm, years old! Honestly, I'm just really, really happy to be here, and I, I appreciate... I'm gonna, like, start crying. I appreciate so much the support of the UK, and... I love you, Gaga! I love you, too! <laughs> I'm sure uh, a lot of people here... Uh, a lot of people here have seen uh, the Monster Ball tour. I know Gwyneth's seen the Monster Ball tour. Uh -huh. I gave her my perfume. Yeah. She smelled lovely when she came, but she said, what does that smell like? She smelled so good. So I, I said, gave her Is it your own perfume? No, no, it was a Mugler Womanity perfume. I gave it to her. Plug. Yeah. <laughs> Case of it free. Uh, <laughs> I went to, to see it, and I loved all the theatricality and all that, but I was sort of was expecting that. I was expecting the kind of spectacle of it. But the bit that impressed me, and I don't know if it was the same for you guys, the bit that impressed me the most was just you banging away at a piano at the end of the thrust stage, just turning the O2 into, like, a pub gig. It was just incredible that was did. always my sort of uh, ambition was to when i was in small clubs to make them feel like arenas and when i'm in arenas make them feel like yeah. small clubs uh, so uh, and when it comes to the piano the piano is a bit like m an extension of my arm uh, i love to dance but when i'm at the piano it's when i feel the most comfortable I'm a songwriter at heart. And I love that still now, you can go to clubs in the Lower East Side in New York and you'll see sort of mad out there performance artists, which you were one of them. Yeah, well, I still am down there. <laughs> do you still go and do some more out there things yeah. down there or you just hang out down there? Yeah, no, I go downtown and I'll, you know, I'll, you know, slosh back some whiskey and perform in one of the old clubs I used to always hang out in. And, you know, if you're from New York or wherever you're from, yeah. if you know the area, you know how to go out and have a good time and not uh, cause too much of a ruckus. I cause a ruckus, but, you know, less of a ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ruckus you want to cause. Yes, yeah. good ruckus. Because when you were doing those kind of clubs, it was quite out there. And I know, was it your, your family, when they saw you doing some of that stuff, they were a bit taken aback? Well, originally, actually, just pop music on the Lower East Side was considered to be very strange, and everyone was making really... Uh, uh, much more, I guess, artistic, sensitive, uh, singer songwriter music. So I wanted to do something that was completely against what everybody else was doing. And yes, my father thought I was a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all right with it? Have they embraced it now? Oh, yes, Daddy's very happy now. I'm saying, I bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Uh, was it your grandfather you were to warn Gwyneth about one of your films? Oh, yes. My grandfather, he, I was very close to him, and he was pretty conservative. And actually, in Shakespeare in Love, I, there was a scene where I got unwrapped because I was playing a boy, and then my, you know, I had to show oh, my, my breasts. You mean that really famous scene? Where <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said to him, Grandpa, I think you're going to be really upset, but I just want to let you know that I do kind of expose my breasts in this movie. And he was like, yeah. I've seen it before. Two eggs, sunny side up. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same sort of thing recently before the Monster Ball aired on HBO. I called my grandma, and my grandma's blind. <laughs> <laughs> but I still had to call her and warn her because uh, early in the show, I say, I don't know if you've 
heard, but I have a pretty tremendous dick, so get your dicks out, New York City. <laughs> and so I, you know, I called my grandma. I said, I just wanted to explain, Grandma, that it's really just meant to be a metaphor for being strong and being aggressive and having a good time. And she just said, I don't understand. And I just... <laughs> <laughs> my sweet grandma. Because, uh, Jeffrey, you, you embraced the nudity as a student actor, didn't you? <clears throat> When I was at university, it was the late 60s, early 70s. It was a very countercultural time, and a lot of really hot stuff was happening on campus. But by that stage, nudity had become very, very passe, you know, from hair and oak Calcutta and everything. Hair? I, yeah, uh. it's a great piece. <laughs> but but uh, by, that, by that stage, I thought, I said to the guy directly, why don't we just have a really quick little sort of cynical blackout sketch where I come out and say, this is a student review, no doubt you'll expecting somebody to get their gear off, and I'd undress really quickly and there'd be a blackout, and they'd kind of laugh and thought that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the director of the newly formed Queensland Theatre Company saw that review, and that's how I got my first professional gig. And I always, I suppose, like to think that he thought I had a big future in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. You can see that coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many jobs you'll get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I say, famously, you have this incredible rapport with your fans and real, you know, real connection with them. I love, uh, you, I love you too. <laughs> okay, some cheering and clapping, and that's that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I suppose what interests me is the kind of the the one-on-one -on -one love, because you are dating, aren't you? Dating. Do you have a boyfriend? No, no boyfriend. Oh, you don't have a boyfriend? No, Do you go I'm on dates? I'm miserably pathetic in my wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but do you go on dates? Can, could somebody ask Lady Gaga out? Um, well, you could. I, I haven't been on any dates recently. I'm working so hard and I just finished my record and, um, I don't know, I get really bored very quickly with men. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm so easy. <laughs> if someone asked you on a date, what would you wear? <laughs> I would imagine they might freak out if I showed up in this wedding. <laughs> <laughs> she seems a little cute. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, obviously, you love clothes and fashion, but fashion sometimes doesn't love you. Uh, there have been a series of, of when well, you've fallen off your shoes a couple oh, of times. Yeah. Well, was Heathrow the, the oh, first I one? I ate shit at Heathrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> so, just in case I needed to be reminded. Well, no, what? there was a really horrible picture of you at Heathrow, and we didn't choose that. That's just you in me. Oh, that's the good one. That's the good one. Yeah. Trust me. I was flying, actually. <laughs> no, I had these really big shoes, and I was so excited, and I was on the plane saying, oh, I can't wait to show off my shoes. They're from Japan. They're custom. They're, like, 50 feet tall. I couldn't wait, and I took three steps and I fucking fell so far <laughs> <laughs> and all the cameras were on me and I said they're gonna you know London's gonna think that I'm I'm a wasted mess which is <laughs> a little bit true because well. <laughs> it is difficult Gwyneth were you uh, you were on a red carpet in oh I had once had one disaster like crazy I went to a premiere of someone a friend's movie and I was wearing these pair of pink Suede pants. It was the 90s. <laughs> and, uh, Don't apologize to me about <laughs> pink suede pants. Timeless. Timeless. <laughs> Timeless. And I, I, I sat down, watched the movie, and as I sat down, the crotch ripped from there all the way back. That's nice. very nice. Good promotion. <laughs> <laughs> get back to my car. My ass is hanging out. <laughs> hanging out of these pants. So luckily I brought a scarf and I wrapped it around my bottom. <laughs> and the next day in the papers they said, oh, it's a new trend, like a scarf around your... <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice if you had just painted right over it. That would be Onto nice. what? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, I was given a list of words I wasn't allowed to say on the show. Really? The only one I'm not allowed to say is see you next Tuesday. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. made that. Did you see that? In Everyone America. went, oh. Oh, you did say it oh, in America, didn't you? Yes. But you knew you couldn't say that in of America. Of course, you did. But I live here now, and see But you, you said next... it about your grandmother! <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding! <laughs> sort of. <laughs> That's a heavy word to be joking with. <laughs>